Happy Thursday, everybody, and welcome to Paint and Cocktails free Facebook Live Paint Night. We will be painting this lovely painting right here. It is called The Mating Place. So hi, everybody. Hope your day's been good. I know we've had a bit of a break from the weather today, which is great. I understand we're going to be getting some more snow tomorrow. When you join us, please remember to tell me where you're from and how's the weather been like where you are. And of course, we need some art juice to help us. So I've got some lovely red wine here. Cheers, everybody. That always helps. Okay, so the brushes that I use, <clears throat> typically these are the three ones I use, but I do vary them up sometimes. I like to use my three quarter inch brush my medium flat brush and a small round one but also every now and then if I've got time if I've got the opportunity to I'll use a much larger brush just over an inch and maybe a long thin one as well and if you have multiple brushes feel free to experiment because that's what this is all about right it's it's time to have some fun and experiment and learn so we will be painting the background and then the trees and the trees is where you really get to experiment and the little critters you can try different brushes i may even do that on camera with you try my different brushes for the the branches and the critters and uh that'll be fun so make sure everybody you have yourselves some napkins stack of napkins important okay that's the one thing that most people seem to forget and you need a cup of water. And remember that when you have these two, keep them apart. This one's for dipping, this one's for sipping. Dipping? Dipping. Try and keep that in mind because, you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. Okay, and for paint, we have yellow, white, a little bit of red some black and brown and I, I spooked these all on a little earlier and they kind of spread out so I'll just try and show you what I've got here I've got some yellow some white some red some black and a wee bit of brown and this is all you need of course just a foam or paper plate you don't need a professional palette although this is my professional palette and Remember that this is acrylic paint. It's likely you'll get some on your fingers. No problem. Scrubs off. If you should get some paint on your clothing and you notice it or on your carpeting, just go and get some warm water, scrub off and rinse. Warm water, scrub off and rinse, repeat, and it comes off no problem. If you don't notice it till the morning, however, yeah, not so much. So just be careful. I always like to say to do a proximity check around you make sure that there's paint where it's meant to be not where it's not meant to be okay and uh, you're allowed to use any size canvas you like i typically use a 16 by 20 but any size is allowed and i like to use this size for demonstration too it shows well and for this painting we always start with the background for all our paintings start with the background and do the front and uh, we're going to be mixing up the yellow with a bit of brown, maybe with a bit of red to make that, and some grays to make the background, and then we'll work on the branches. And I'll give you lots of tips on your branches. So guys, let me know where you're from, how your day was, how the weather's been. Well, I think we're almost ready to get started. You don't need an apron. I do because, you know, I make a mess. But if you have one, it's always good. If you have sleeves, roll them up. Very smart. Okay, so I'm going to just start with the background. I'm going to be starting with my big brush. I like to always wet it off a little bit first and then dab it. Now, I'll be telling you when to change brushes. I'll be telling you when to clean brushes. And the most important thing about cleaning brushes is to remember to scrub on the bottom. Yeah, that sound. Scrub, 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 scrub. Tap out, check to see if there's any lumps. If there are, do it again. And the real cleaning comes on your napkins. 
dab, 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 scrape, 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 dab, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape. The more you dab, the more you scrape, the cleaner it will come, okay? And you don't really need to change your paint water. I never do. If you feel the real need to because it's really disgusting or delicious looking, uh, go ahead, but I never need to. You, the real cleaning comes from just scraping on your napkins, okay? So make sure you've got those napkins ready. So the first thing we're going to do is mix up some color. We're going to make a tinted white with adding some yellow. So mine happen to be close by to each other anyway. But I'm just going to mix these two together to tint the white a nice light yellow. Pastelli, basically the white's been tinted yellow. Okay, that's what you need to keep in mind. And we're going to paint vertically. And you can just, so this is divided into thirds, but you don't have to be that accurate, right? This is art. You can interpret it any way you like. And if you don't like these background colors, you get to choose your own. That's perfectly allowed. So we're just going to start off by making a third of this section tinted yellowy white really pastel -y. and if you're feeling fancy one of the things you can do is wrap these colors around the edge of your canvases top and bottom gives it a nice finish if you've never painted on a canvas before one of the first things you're going to notice is how quickly a the canvas eats the paint it just eats it up and it's gone off your brush and it's you, you didn't have enough so that's number one lesson you always remember to have enough paint when you're doing a broad surface with enough paint on both sides of your brush to be able to spread the load and the second is how quickly this acrylic paint dries it dries super fast okay so that's fine if you are going to be layering it's not so fine if you want to blend when you want to blend colors you actually want the paint to be somewhat wet okay so which is sometimes why you see painters paint a little fast because we want the paint to be wet enough that it can blend with the next color next to it so it gives it a nice soft texture all right so now I'm going to grab a little bit of brown and mix it into that puddle of uh, light yellow white that I just made. I'm just going to grab a corner of brown on my brush, mix it into that. And I'm going to gently streak that in through here. Top to bottom. And I'm kind of using my brush this way. And I'm just going to be streaking that in. I'm going to have some fun with this. I'm going to experiment with this painting, I think. Okay. Now I'm going to add some more of that white yellow that I made. I'm just going to add that again, make it a little light yellow, throw some on to help blend that in. When you do that, it gets rid of some of the harsher lines that you may not want. It didn't, well, of course, that's entirely up to you, right? This is art. You get to choose what your painting looks like. How much of each you want is entirely up to you. And that's the point of experimenting. But I always like to, for my own personal taste, I like the softer looks. All right. Focus issues. Focus. Focus. Come on, come on. All right. Very good. I need to straighten that part out there. Okay, so now I'm going to clean my brush because I'm going to do the grays next. I'm just going to put this camera down clean the brush star, star, star. 
scrub, scrub, scrub. Check to see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me tap that out. And that's clean. One, two, three. Okay. Now, gray. A little bit of black. Little, teeny, teeny, weeny bits of black. Into a corner of some white. And that makes a nice light gray. We can always, we're going to be adding some darker streaks later. But I like to make a nice light gray. And I'm going to be doing this there. See the brush holds the dark and light paint together, makes it very marbly. And you end up with these nice streaks already there. Right from top to bottom, as straight as you can. Now, one of the techniques is sometimes we paint like this, short strokes, which is fine, but it does leave little brush stroke marks all throughout your painting. And to get rid of those, we just go from the top and to the bottom, bottom to the top, up and down, up and down, and it gets rid of those brush stroke marks. That is a wee bit too much there, I think. Up and down, up and down. Now, if you have a tiny, small brush, not a nice wide one, it's going to take you a little bit to cover the, a large canvas. If you've got a smaller canvas, yeah, that's pretty good. won't take you long at all. And depending on how old your acrylic paint is or how long maybe it's been sitting out, it may start to dry up a little bit. And you may want to be adding just a dab, just a dip of water into that puddle of paint you're using will help thin it out a little bit to help it spread. So I've got my goldy color, I've got my gray streaky color ready to go. Let's clean my brush. And of course, with the gray, you can also wrap that around the corner of the edge of the canvas as well. Dab, dab, dab. Bing. Now I even burned myself a swig of art juice. Cheers. Well, you know what? Today is National Wine Day. Believe that or not, National Wine Day. Okay, now we're going to make up this kind of coppery color here. So I'm going to make a rose gold. Uh, so first I'm going to make pink. A little bit of red into some white. Makes pink. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of brown. You can always start, start with a little bit. And you can add more as you go, because you can't take away once you've added. So keep adding a little bit of brown. A little bit of brown. Hmm, maybe I need more. Just a bit at a time, keep changing up the color to get the color tone that you want. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, it's kind of pink compared to the original. But maybe I'll, uh, I'll add some more brown to that. add yellow and a little bit of yellow as well gives you that nice coppery tone so that's pink you're making pink red and white you're gonna add some brown to get the rose gold going 
and some yellow to give her that coppery tone. And we're going to go right over the, the yellow we did on the left and the gray on the right. This is a good painting of kids. Kids like this one. It's simple, it's basic. It's got some learning to do for about trees, and color mixing, and it's got some critters in it. Kids love critters. My bottom part here. And if you are wrapping your colors around the edges, don't forget the top and bottom. All right, gonna let that just sit for a second. Oh, I need some more. See, that canvas ate the paint right there. I'm going to throw in some brown streaks through it to give it a consistent streaky look. I need a bit more brown. Give me a second. All right, so I've added a bit more brown to my brush. And I'm going to streak in. that brown in there So we've got ourselves our three colors. If you'd like that more coppery, just throw more yellow on top. That will change that up. It's hard sometimes to get a straight line when you're standing up. So that needs to dry for a little bit before we move on to doing the branches and it won't take long it'll just be a hmm, two three minutes in the meantime i'm going to clean this brush oh, there you go and just to let you know if you didn't know already we do lots of private parties and i would love to hear from you if you're interested in holding a private or corporate event, just email me at uh, info at paintingcocktails.com. I'll get back to you with the details. And uh, we also sell art kits if you need them. Okay. Brush. So I'm done with the big brush. I'm going to be moving to my medium brush in a moment. So I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. And the rest before we move on to doing the trees. Um, this is now the layering part. I talked to you about blending. So we want the paint to be wet when it's blended so that it can actually accept other paint. We need it to be dry enough so that we can now layer another paint on, uh, color of paint on top. So we just have to let that dry enough to do that. Otherwise, all you're doing is starting to blend and move paint around instead of holding in place. And I will be keeping this video up on our group page for a while, and then I transfer them to my YouTube channel as well, under Paint and Cocktails. But uh, for the last little while, for the next little while, I'll be keeping it up. 
so you can come back to it. And when you have done your paintings, I would love to see them. Just add them to the comment section of uh, this video and it'll be great to see your work. So let's just let that dry. I hope everyone's doing okay. And uh, we're in for a blast. I'm in located here in Kitchener, Ontario. And uh, we had some snow yesterday and the days before. Today was great. But I understand that we're going to get on the blast tonight and tomorrow. So, and anybody in Texas, I hope you're doing okay. I have cousins, quite a few cousins in Texas. Uh, they're blown away by this crazy Canadian weather they're getting. Amazing. Let's see, a good way of checking to see how your paint's doing. Either A, you can look to see if it's glistening. And B, you can just give it a little tap. If it's tacky wet, that's great. But if it comes off on your fingers, it's not dry enough yet. Okay. If you're just joining us, this is an easy painting to, to jump in on. It's basically yellow with some brown, some gray with some darkest gray streaks, and a copper rose gold color of that pink with yellow and brown mixed in. And the more yellow, the more coppery it will change to. Okay, so for the branches, I like to do, to start off the main branches anyway, the trunks and the bigger branches, this is the size brush I like to use, okay? Nice flat one, because we're gonna be using the very front edge of that to do the nice thin lines. When we dip it into our paint and scrape it off on the side of the, the plate, the front is going to look like a flathead screwdriver. You get a very thin line, and that line is great for drawing thin branches in the outline of trunks, and then we can paint those in. So, that's getting pretty good. So, I grab some black paint, I press it down onto the plate, I scrape off to the edge. And can you see? That is a thin line and we can now put in some land at the bottom and some trunks on the side it's pretty easy we're going to start on one side here and work our way up to the top right corner to basically come away at the top like that and we can mirror that on this side a little wider at the bottom start aiming okay start aiming for the top left corner. So there's our two main trunks. We can do a land line of where we roughly want to have land in here. And then it's just a matter of coloring in. You get to color in the black. This is the easy part. A lot of people like this. I'm just going to color in those parts right there. And for the coloring in, you can just switch. I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch to a medium size, excuse me, a larger size brush. Dip it in the black paint. And just paint away. And again, if you're wrapping colors around, you can do that with the black if you wish on the bottom and the sides. simple to do right this is fun coloring in is always nice every now and then you may just want to check the consistency of your paint I've talked about this if it gets a little thick you can dip it in your water and it'll help spread and you can add some bumps to your land if you want little hills your choice Remember, this is your painting. You get to do with it as you please. And off the 
cosine 2. See? Coming along already. And I will try not to paint my hand Whoop. too much. And I do do it a lot. So there, there we have the two side trees down on the ground. Pretty good. I know I'm going to get black all on my hand. So I'm done with that big brush. Scrape off the paint. Go away, give it a stir. Go back to my medium brush again in black. Always dip on both sides and scrape off both sides. Get that nice thin line. And we're going to do some of these main side branches here. So I always like to start off like this, vertically. And I'll just rotate the brush, nice steady light touch. Gives me a branch. Now these are just the bones of this tree. We will be adding and thickening up these branches as we go. Okay, we'll be making them thicker, but especially where they come off the trunk. So it doesn't look so spindly. Do another one here. We've got to make room for our critters. Come off here. See my middle part's still a bit wet. Come off here. Right, that's a good start. It's a good start to a tree. We will come back to that in just a second. I'm going to sort of mirror that on the other side. Not exactly, but similar. a good start so now you see where the branches come away from the trunk we need to go over that again and thicken up where it meets the trunk itself so I'm going to start a little higher up I'm going to go along thicken up this branch maintain the structure here so now we've got a more substantial branch going on there. If you're finding, remember I told you about experimenting, if you're finding this fine work is too much for you using this medium brush, you can switch to your small brush. Give that a try and see how that works for you. something you can hold on to. Same here. Make it a little thicker. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Put that in. It's coming along. I like it. Same on this side, and then we'll talk about the side branches, all these other little ones that come off. Over here. 
here. Structure to that, much better, much better. This one here's a little bendy. Let's get it a little thicker. And just pull them over nice and steady. And then as we come to the end, I'm just lifting away from the canvas. There's a nice point to it. as we go, come away to the end and kind of lift away from the canvas. And this one here is thickening up. Okay, so there's our main branches, the bones of this tree. So now we're going to be doing other branches. But I want to show you something. Just give me a second, I'll put this down. When we're making these side branches, we're actually making little V's or Y's. The letter V, the letter Y. If I hold this branch, this painting this way, what we have here is the letter Y or the letter V. I want you to think of that when you're making your side branches. Don't think of the letter U. You don't want U's like this. You want little letter Y's or V's. And again, for the smaller branch, you can switch to, um, let's try that out, with a smaller brush. But it's not necessary. I often like using that medium brush for all my branches. Now we can add a little dip doo down here. And I can pull away from the canvas just as we reach the end of the branch. So there's the first letter Y. I can add another little one here. Add a little one here. Here, thicken up a little base. And we start progressing. Basically, it's repeat. I mean, this just made a Y, that just made a Y. Bring this one a little higher up here. Just like that, and we just continue. Can we bring one down here? And then we make enough room to put our triggers. There's a need and need to remember to leave enough room to remind myself. trees. Now the only problem about using, for me anyway, the only problem about using the small brush is that there's not much paint on there and it runs out quickly. Whereas if I use the medium brush it lasts a little longer. But this is an experiment today. We're going to try different things. things work out. That's the fun of painting I like anyway, just seeing how things turn out.
Yeah, one side done. You can add as many or as few branches as you like. That's the fun of it. You get to make your own world here. Little these, little wise. Keep in mind where it is you're going to be putting your critters. And the trick to a good branch is to remember to lift the brush away from the canvas as you come to the end of the branch. Pretty simple technique, right? Once you got it down, it doesn't take long to do. And just go with what, what comes to you. Just remember to lift that brush away from the canvas as you come to the end. Of your branch. Some in the middle too. Where are the ones you want? You can keep going as many as you want or as few as you want. So that's good for the branches. Now we can do the critters. So let's start with an owl. I'm going to stick with my small brush for that. Let's put an owl here. So basically we're going to be doing what I call an almond shape. It comes below the tree and that gets painted in. And his head, which is basically a two little puffy cheeks and a flat head, almost flat. And that gets painted in. And two little puffy, if, if it's a uh, an owl that has the tufts, little tufts on the side of the head there, like that. And you can give them a little longer tail. And look at an owl. You can do big ones, little ones, as many as you like. Over here we can do a cat, because this is the meeting place. And I like to start off with a tombstone shape. body in here we can start we'll reshape this one in a minute and he gets a kind of a baseball -y head to start with and you can elongate whichever side he's looking at so if he's looking to the left we can just gently elongate the left side a wee bit And 
cats have haunches. So they're going to fill these out like this. Fill out his body a bit more. I need to look at it straight on. Fill out his body to get the right proportions. He gets haunches that come below the branch and a tail. Bum and give him some cat ears. We have a cat. And you can do anything with the tail. You can loop it around, make it fanciful. Now a cat. We can do a bird. A couple of birds. Birds are pretty easy, believe it or not. It's a straight line and a fat belly. Basically, it's like a D. Change that in. Put a straight line back, fat belly. Little head. And the head can decide which way you want him pointing. If he's looking to the right, he gets a beak that goes over there. And you can have a few tail feathers sticking out of the back. We have a little bird, and if he looks the other way, be over here, straight line, a big fat belly, especially with a robin, some tail feathers at the back, a small head, and we'll make him look this way. Round the back a little bit. And we have another bird. So here we have critters all meeting at the meeting place. You can try another little owl. So it's a small almond. Small almond. Little chubby cheeks. Kind of a flat head. Change that in. Two little tufts on the side of his head, and we can bring this tail down a bit. And we've got a big owl, a little owl, a cat, and some birds, and they are at the meeting place. And you can do as many critters as you want, as many branches as you want. And one of the finishing touches that we can do on this, you can grab an, another medium brush or a round brush like that, and we can start throwing in some leaves. Or not. Your choice. If you want leaves, have leaves. If not, don't worry about it. But I'll just grab some of the colors I have made already on my palette here, and I'm just going to start gently throwing in some leaves. Now you notice what I'm not doing, guys? I'm not just painting along the branches. The leaves grow on the outside. And all I'm doing is stabbing using the front edge of that brush, the very front bristles. I'm just punching the canvas gently to give them some leaf effects. Then we can punch a little harder, we can punch lightly to get different size leaves. Just like so. I'm just using that coppery color I made up. So 
fill in the gaps and just bunch the leaves around the edge. You can fill in gaps as well. And there you have it, the meeting place. I hope you enjoyed that, everybody. I hope everyone has a great weekend, stays dry and warm. Again, if you want to contact me about any private events, just email me at info at paintandcocktails.com. I'm going to plan another free Facebook event, usually on Fridays. I can't uh, this Friday because I'm already booked for an event. So I try and do them every two weeks on a Friday. So hopefully we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.